Well, if you followed along any of my any of my adventures, maybe you've seen me get really excited when I come across a snake. And on this adventure, I'm joined by Mr. Littles, the gopher tortoise. Now you might want to ask, why the heck is Damon holding a gopher tortoise and why does it matter to me? Well, these guys are really, really cool, unique tortoises to the south. And especially here in South Georgia, if you have gopher tortoises, it's the key to having a really, really healthy ecosystem. So we are here to find gopher tortoises, but we're mainly here to check out the endangered eastern indigo snake. So we are on the Orient Society's Indigo Snake Preserve, South Georgia, Mr. Little's Turtles. Welcome to February in Georgia. We're gonna have a good time. All right. Great, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out here into an area that has pretty high density of gopher tortoise burrows. And basically we'll, we'll split up and we're gonna go burrow to burrow and look for indigo snakes that maybe have come out on this warm weather and are sitting somewhere in the So you're gonna expect them to be basking close. Yeah, but it's also breeding season, so snakes could be moving as well. Okay. But, but typically we'll use the burrows as a real focal point. If you see an indigo snake, catch it because we have a long-term monitoring program that's been ongoing for many years now and this is one of the long-term monitoring sites so if we if we catch an animal we'll be processing it measuring it weighing it seeing if it's a recapture those right. types of things awesome all right well i'm ready to dive on a big indigo snake yeah let's get after it <laughs> one of the things that got me outside as a young kid and throughout really my whole life I was going out looking for snakes. I come home from school, I look for snakes on my walk home. I get home from school, I go to the local creek, I go to the pond behind the golf course. I just look for snakes and I think it honestly has helped me be a better big game hunter. I think it teaches you to look and to listen differently and to really read your surroundings and your environment. We got droppings here from deer. Kind of a pretty obvious trail and tracks. So as I'm walking through this, I'm literally listening for the sound of scales going over leaves. I'm listening for the sounds of rustling grass, of a snake crawling away or a snake even recoiling. Their tendency is gonna to be to wanna to hide or, or run. <laughs> looking for kind of open pockets of sandy soil in the dense cover. I'm looking for you know exposed mounds where they've excavated their den. They've pushed all the earth out. It creates a little open raised dome and that acts like a wildlife magnet. So just like if you're bass fishing and you're looking for a sunken tree to fish cover, that's all I'm doing. I'm looking for the cover to find the various species that use that cover. Goes down good, but another mound, another strikeout. Go for a tortoise mound. You can see as I was describing, just pushed up all the excavated earth out of the hole. I don't see any fresh tracks or anything. Let's see if you feel anything in your mouth. That's gonna wrap up the day. Found, I don't know, 20 mounds maybe, um, but no snakes. Tomorrow morning we'll be out and when that sun first hits the mounds, that should be prime time. Looking forward to the morning. Thank you, sir. Cheers. 82 degrees in February. How about that? Not bad at all. <laughs> Not bad at all. So this is thousands of acres. Mm -hmm. It is open now to hunting. I saw that in the signs coming in where there's sections that are open to public hunting. Yep. And who was it that this owned a lot of this land before it was purchased for conservation? Well, over the years, uh, since I've been aware of the property, it's actually changed hands multiple times. Various private landowners, uh, forestry companies, it's mainly been used for forestry and um, as private hunting property. When we purchased this land and protected it as public land um, for the gopher tortoise, but now you can come out here and you can hunt and fish and bird watch and hike and do whatever it is you like so to do in nature. All back to those keystone species. Mr. Littles, you met earlier, this is all for him. I mean, it's like you're saying, 350 species dependent on the gopher tortoises, 351. I mean, I gotta eat, I gotta hunt, this is it. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Well, as we're walking through here looking for snakes, here we see you know, a young longleaf pine, some more mature longleaf pine behind me. And longleaf pine are just a key part of this ecosystem. And the other key part of that is fire. So about 50 yards behind me, you'll see that there's a fire slowly working its way uh, through this forest. And that fire is absolutely critical for maintaining all of the wildlife species that live in the longleaf pine ecosystem. The fire creates a very open canopy, and that open canopy is what animals like the gopher tortoise depend on. The really amazing thing about this ecosystem, when you have the fire that produces the habitat for the tortoises, the tortoises themselves then create the habitat for hundreds of other animals. We have documented over 350 species of wildlife that depend on tortoise burrows for their survival. And so I don't care what type of animal it is you care about, whether it's quail or snakes or crickets, you should care about this fire because it's what's putting them on this landscape. All right, well, there is a classic buck scrape. Low branch, cleared out ground. This is a huntable deer, and this is a huntable deer here because there's gopher tortoises there. This land is being conserved for gopher tortoises, and it creates public hunting opportunities for you. Snake, big one. Got it. I got. It. I'm wrapped up. About the shit. Yeah. First in to go, snake. So you can see on this guy, his, his eyes are, are, are kind of blue looking. Well now the snake's eyes are covered with a scale. They have no eyelids. Um, and when they go through a shedding cycle, and depending on the species and age, that you know, that, that shedding cycle can happen the, from months to, you know, <laughs> weeks to months apart. Um, it's not uncommon though, a lot of snakes, um, especially ones that hibernate or, or, or denning snakes, will shed have a, like a spring shed, they'll come out of the den and they'll shed their skin and it's like a, a bit of a rebirth. So when that happens though, there's a fluid layer that builds up under that scale on their eye and that's what you're seeing there is actually, he can't see really good right now, he's probably going to be a little more defensive than he usually would be, but you can even see, extremely tame snake um, by nature. But the, during the shed cycle, fluid will build up under there as the new skin is kind of getting a, a covering on it and then the eye will actually start to clear a little bit and then he'll shed its skin. And then it'll be a nice, bright, black snake, <clears throat> nice fresh skin, and then the cycle will start over again and a few months later, same kind of thing. So when you see snakes like that, a lot of people, snakes that are extra, extra defensive can often be snakes that are going in to shed and it's just because they're scared, they don't, their senses are a little compromised, so they're more defensive than they usually are. But here you're seeing a lot of the, just the natural docile nature of indigo snakes and he's just chilling not a lot of snakes this big you can just pick up and not pay a price for it <laughs> all right so we're gonna scan him for a microchip um, if it's a snake that we've caught before he'll have a little chip that'll give us a unique id and so right we'll so just like jaeger just like my dog's chip exactly and we'll know every time we caught him when we caught him where we caught him all that good stuff There he is. That's his number. His number, all right. So we've caught this snake before. I'm pretty sure this snake was caught earlier this year, actually. Excellent. It's just really, really fascinating all the different ways that snakes have learned to be masters and uh, like one of the peak predators in this ecosystem, in the longleaf pine. Yeah, this is one of the top predators yeah. out there. So let's get them measured. I'm going to go with six and a half feet. He's gonna, he's gonna behave. <laughs> yeah, so keep going all the way to the vent. All right, so this vent, that's their opening where they expel waste. So I'm gonna go with a vent length of 
67. In centimeters. I'm oh, sorry, in centimeters. Then 170. And then out to, call it a perfect 200 Just over six on the tail. Feet. So another 30. Oh, I think my guess of 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Pretty darn close. Now no, I was I was spot on on the length, so now I'm gonna go with seven and a half. Yeah, twenty nine hundred grams. Yeah, so what's that work out to in pounds? Six point four. So I was off by a pound. All right, catch and release snaking. So I got a lot of, I got a tortoise hole here. I got a lot of practice catching all these fly fishing. So I got a hunt that's gonna work just the same. He's gonna be like fired up to not go in the hole. There he goes. Touchdown, see you later. Ooh. Well, that was a full day. This has yeah. been awesome. Thanks so much for having me down. This Thanks has been, uh, you know, to get to hold, you know, a, a threatened and endangered species is really cool to be able to help with some of the work, tagging the snake, Mark, you know, seeing it was a recapture. You know, it's big male getting ready to start the new year. It's spring, he's getting ready to shed his skin, get ready for the new season. I got us at the, I lost count. You know better than I do how many WMAs we've been on. I saw a hog and deer sign on a mall. I'm ready to come back for the fall to hunt. So again, <laughs> thanks again. This has been really cool. The work you've done here, it's making a difference. Yeah, thank you. And you know, to see something like an indigo snake in the wild is an incredibly unique, um, rare experience. So I'm glad we could share that with you. And, um, you know, it's the only reason you have the opportunity to do that type of thing is the work that we're doing, some of the prescribed fire work, some of the reintroduction work. Um, and then, you know, saving an indigo snake, you're doing so much more. You're protecting all of the animals in this forest. Some of the animals you talked about hunting, other animals such as quail and gopher tortoises. So yeah, I gotta go back and thank Mr. Littles again, or yeah. the, the gopher <laughs> tortoise. You know, it's cool seeing. We, we saw a couple sunning; they're starting to come out. You know, we saw some tracks, look like little elephant tracks. And so that's starting. This the season is here; it's upon us. Yeah. So really, really again, thanks yeah. again. This thank has been you. Awesome.